So a couple months ago, I made a video all about how you can edit your videos faster. And this video is kind of similar in that it's just gonna be like a bunch of different little tips that you can use in Premiere Pro and a bit of After Effects. But instead of showing you how to edit faster, I wanna show you some really easy techniques that'll improve your edits. So most of these are just like pressing a button or checking off a box, but will have a drastic effect on improving your footage. I'm gonna show you how to make your clips more dynamic, make your animations smoother, keep Premiere from ruining your colors when you export your project, and more than that. So let's jump into it, starting out at the beginning of the editing process and working our way through to the export process. Starting out at the very beginning, it's very beneficial to edit and export your project in 4K, even if you're not shooting it in 4K, and there are a few different reasons to do that. It preserves more detail when you export and upload your project, and if you add any graphics and titles over your footage, those will be in 4K even if the footage isn't. And when you post your video on YouTube or Vimeo or wherever, you'll have that little option to watch it in 4K, so it kind of makes people think that the video is in 4K even though the footage isn't. I actually shoot the vast majority of my footage, including this clip right now, in 1080 and then just edit and export it in 4K. Next, for a project setting that's a bit more of a personal preference of mine, try out editing in 18x9 instead of 16x9. So instead of using 3840x2160, you would use 3840 by 1920. If you look at newer phones, tablets, laptops, and desktop monitors, the standard screen size for newer products is moving from 16 by 9 to 18 by 9. So you're essentially future proofing your content. So it's not going to be cropped on future and modern displays. Since my phone is an iPhone 11, a newer phone, it has a two to one display. So when I watch a 16 by 9 video, it's going to have either a bit of crop around the edges or be zoomed in and have the top and bottom parts of the clip cut off. But if I watch a two to one video or an 18 by nine video, then it fills the screen perfectly. I also tend to think this looks kind of cool and unique and just makes your content stand out a little bit while still being very subtle. And I think you guys agree with that because I get a lot of comments on some of my videos asking what aspect ratio they're in. And those are in 18 by nine. It also gives you a little bit of extra wiggle room when you're editing. So if I screwed up like the headroom on this shot and didn't give myself enough, then I would be able to move that clip around under those tiny little black bars at the top and bottom and make it look better. Now that we have our project set up, let's move on to talking about some actual editing techniques, starting out with using camera lens blur instead of Gaussian blur. Gaussian blur is the only blur option in Premiere Pro, so you will have to use After Effects for this, but I think it's worth it and I'm going to be keeping the rest of the techniques in this video entirely inside of Premiere. If you're compositing something for a VFX shot and want it to look realistic, then using a camera lens blur just makes it look more lifelike by replicating the blur that you would get with an actual camera lens. And if you're doing like motion graphics and blurring out the background, then I think it just looks a little cooler and more unique. The camera lens blur effect in After Effects is great, but it does take a toll on your computer. So I would recommend actually using the fast box blur effect and setting the iterations to one and then using that instead. And you'll get a similar effect without absolutely destroying your processor. The next technique is one that I talked about in my color grading tutorial a few weeks ago, and that's to desaturate the blacks and whites in your image. So when you're correcting for white balance or adding a tint to your image using the curves or the color wheels, that can tend to add a bit of color into the completely white and completely black pixels, which just doesn't look realistic. They should be completely black and completely white. So what you can do is use the Luma V saturation curve in Lumetri Color and select and desaturate the darkest and lightest parts of the image. The change is usually super subtle or entirely unnoticeable, but always worth doing to catch those little mishaps in your color grading. So I would just add this on an adjustment layer over 
your entire timeline. Next, let's talk a bit about the horizontal flip effect, which is one that you shouldn't add on an adjustment layer over your entire project, but that you can use on a few shots here and there to make your edit flow a lot more smoothly. So if you have a clip where the camera is moving to the right and then one where it's moving to the left, followed by a clip where it's also moving to the right, you can just use a horizontal flip effect on that middle clip so that they're all moving to the right. It seems like a really obvious technique to use, but sometimes it just doesn't occur to you. Then let's move away from editing your clips and talk a bit about animation, particularly how to make your keyframe animations a lot smoother. To do this, we're gonna use keyframe interpolation or the easy ease effects in Premiere Pro and After Effects. So basically just open up the keyframes for your animation, right click the first one and select easy ease out, and then right click the last keyframe and select easy ease in. And that's gonna add these little handles and you'll see that there's a curve on that keyframe graph showing the velocity of that animation. So you can see it starts out at a very low velocity, then gets a lot faster towards the middle of the animation and then slows back down by the end. And if you take those handles and drag them a little closer to each other, then you'll see that velocity spike in the middle become a lot more dramatic. And if you watch back the animation, you can see it starts out very slowly, gets fast in the middle, and then slows back down at the end. This makes it to where you don't have that unrealistic harsh stop and start on your animations and can also smooth out some seams within them by having that really fast motion in the middle. While we're on the topic of animations, let's talk about using the transform effect, which basically just allows you to keyframe the position, anchor point, scale, and rotation of a layer without keyframing its actual transform properties, if that makes sense. There are a few different reasons to do this, but the main benefit for me is that it enables you to add motion blur to your animations within Premiere Pro. So you do the exact same thing you would normally, just using the transform effect instead, and then uncheck this use composition shutter angle option and set the shutter angle to 180. When you do that, Premiere's just gonna add in a realistic amount of motion blur to those animations. And once again, this just looks more realistic and can also hide some seams in the animation by blurring it out. The transform effect does also have a few other uses. For example, if you've already animated the scale of a layer, like you've animated it to scale in, and then you want to take that entire layer and scale it up, but not mess up the keyframes, then you can use the transform effect for that. The next few techniques are for those of you who are editing a sequence with a widescreen aspect ratio. The first of which is to export in widescreen, but edit in 16 by nine with a black bar overlay over your footage. And that sounds insane, but let me explain. The final file that you upload to the internet should always be the actual aspect ratio of the video without black bars at the top and bottom, but there are a couple benefits to editing with the black bars. If you're editing 16 by nine footage in a widescreen sequence, when you nest a clip, you're essentially losing the detail at the top and bottom of the clip. But if you edit in 16 by nine and just overlay the black bars over your footage, you're not losing any detail at all because it's still there, it's just under the bars. This way, if you've nested a clip, you can still move it around to reframe or animate it. Then when you're finished editing and ready to export, just create a new sequence that's actually in that aspect ratio and drag your final sequence into it and then you won't see those bars anymore and you can export it correctly. This way the black bars that you overlaid over the footage during the edit are essentially acting as kind of a reference without making any permanent changes to the footage. Now let's talk about my favorite thing about editing widescreen, which is that you can add some extra camera movement in by using that extra detail at the top and bottom. So you can take a clip and animate it to maybe move down a bit if it's panning down and make that motion more dramatic. My favorite way to use this is to take a drone clip with absolutely no tilt motion, like the drone's just moving forward and keyframe it to either tilt down or tilt up under those widescreen bars. And it just makes the clip so much more dynamic. If you watch a before and after of one of my travel films, you'll see that I'm using this technique on almost every single clip because it just helps out so much for reframing and adding some more dynamic motion into your shots. And now we've completely finished editing our project and I wanna give you a few techniques to make your footage look better after you export it. Or I guess I should say, 
prevent Adobe Premiere Pro from making your footage look terrible after you export it because it has a tendency to do that. It's entirely possible that you've exported a project from Premiere and then looked at it and realized that it just looked flat. It looked way less saturated and less contrasty and the colors were a little off compared to the way it looks in Premiere. And you're right, when Premiere exports your project, it completely messes up the colors. The permanent flawless fix for this, right, is to go to your general preferences in Premiere Pro and enable display color management. And this is gonna change the way that Premiere exports your footage. Then go to the description of this video and download Adobe's Gamma Compensation LUT and put that over your footage on an adjustment layer or in the export before you render it out. If you do that, you'll notice that your footage looks exactly the same in Premiere as it does once it's exported, which is great, hooray. But there's one problem if you've already graded your project, and that's that you'll have to go back once you've changed those settings and fix it because it'll look different. So if you're in a pinch and you're not gonna be able to go back and adjust that color grading, I do have like a 90% fix that'll at least make it not look so bad. And that's to use Lumetri Color and just compensate for what Premiere is gonna do when you export. So I did a ton of tests on this the other day, right? Just like tweaking settings, exporting, tweaking again, and getting it to look as close as I possibly could. And the numbers that worked for me were setting the contrast to five, the saturation to 120, and the tint to two. The frustrating thing is that Premiere's export foolery is not as simple as just removing saturation and contrast from the clip. It affects different colors differently. So I would adjust the tint so that the skin tones would look accurate and then the blues and greens would look completely inaccurate. So there's really no perfect answer, but this got me pretty close. Then finally, when it's time to export that project, increase the bit rate. Like Premiere's default bit rate for exporting videos is 10 megabits a second, which is way too low. Set that to at least like 30. If you increase that bit rate before you export, you're gonna notice way less compression and more detail in your final export. Hooray. But that's all I have for you today. I know a lot of this was probably stuff that you might've already known, but I hope there was something in here for every single one of you that could help you out a bit and teach you something new to apply to your workflow. If you learned something new or enjoyed this video, do feel free to show your support by leaving a like on the video. I've said this outro so many times and I still mess it up. My brain is turning to goo. If you enjoyed this video or learned something new from it, feel free to show your support by leaving a like on the video, sharing it with your friends, or even subscribing to my channel. I upload new videos just like this every single week. And I've also been posting a lot of new stuff on Instagram using the Reels feature. So if you like cinematography, I've been posting these little like three-way split things. They've been kind of fun to play around with. I post one almost every day. So go follow me over there. Um, Instagram, I also show you like all of my photography and like fun little BTS snippets from me out hiking and filming these videos. But that's all for now. Keep creating and I'll see you next time.